more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, Top Billing, we've reached the point of the offseason where I call it candy content time because, hey, it's getting annoying to do stuff in retrospect and a little bit too early to do straight up previews. So I want to hit you right now with my top 10 running backs of the SEC for the past 15 years. Just 15 years. Do yourself a favor. Take 22 minus 15 and then call me in the morning, right? Do not come here talking about some dude from 1986 and all this shit like that. This is just the past 15 years, and it's my list, right? Not your list. It's my list going from my own brain. This is no research or anything. I like to do what I call jog the memory exercises where I just think of something and do no research on it or, or none of that and then just try to come up with something just to keep the brain firing on all cylinders. I don't want to be like my man, Les Vegas, a.k.a. Super Google Man. All right, so this exercise was extremely hard. You can make the case for about 50 different running backs. No joke to be in the top 10. The SEC absolutely loaded with running backs, especially of the past 15 years. Hell, of the previous 15 years before that as well, and the previous 15 before that, I might just go and do the previous 15 or the best of the rest or something like that as well because, man, I left some people out that I did not want to leave out. Shout outs to my man, the Philly Flyer, DeAndre Swift. Dude was cold as hell. You talk about agility out the wazoo, suddenness, straight up butter type ability, right, to slip through cracks, get skinny and everything like that, and he ran with some power and physicality. The guy was just the absolute truth. Shout outs to guys like Nile Davis, uh, Arkansas. I don't know if you guys remember that dude was a big old freak there. Shout outs to my boy from the DMV, Ben Tate at Auburn. I love me some Ben Tate. He was steady Eddie with it. Uh, not really much to say bad about his game. Not the most fastest guy you'll ever see or anything like that, but he was fast enough and he had great vision and all that. But hey, man, without further ado, let's go ahead and get down to it. Number 10, I'm going with my man Trey Mason at Arbor. One of those fire hydrant types. Trey Mason was hella clutch, man. I remember that season. Well, he had multiple seasons that were just off the charts, in my opinion. But that one particularly magical season there, that man piled up about 9,000 yards, it seemed like. And he was extremely clutch, man. They were running that wide zone with the dude. And um, they were doing all those uh, different options and everything with Nick Marshall and him. And, man, every time he got the ball, man, I'm like, man, this dude is about to make something happen. Powerful dude. I really love dudes who run with power and can work with the finesse portion of it as well. I, he didn't have 9,000 yards, but he did pile up 1,800 yards in that 2013 season where they went to the Natty there. 317 attempts of 5.7 average. He had 23 touchdowns, man. They didn't really use him out of the backfield, but when they did, you can see he was very impactful, man. Much love to one Trey Mason. At number nine, I'm rocking with that boy, Benny Snell from the University of Kentucky. A complete physical runner with great vision. That man was fun as hell to watch. He's one of those backs to me that was greater than the sum of his parts. Pause, right? Meaning... To me, he stood out on a team that probably lacked, well, hell, as the evidence goes, it lacked NFL presence amongst the rest of his teammates, but he made the most out of a, you know what I'm saying, so-so situation as far as talent goes. That man was the absolute truth. A rare breed as that man went over a 1,000 yards each of his three seasons in college football, nearly 50 touchdowns on the ground, Man, what more can be said about Benny Snell? 5'11", 223 pounds, built like the prototypical running back that you would not want to tackle because that man will soften your stool. All right, for number eight, I'm going with this monster right here, Trent Richardson. Now, I struggle with the next eight selections here. Trent Richardson could have been my number one. Had Trent Richardson gotten 
like one more season as the guy, he could have very well been my number one because in my list here, I'm going by attributes, right? As well as production or something like that. But I'm going by attributes most. And this dude was extremely quick, extremely agile. I remember that move he put on, who was it? Old Miss? That stop and start reverse John or whatever like that combined with his physicality combined with his hands in his build at what five nine two twenty or something like that uh this guy was a complete load to bring down another stool softener cat who could also muscle relax you too i would see here my man was third in the heisman voting came in like gangbusters in his first season uh, 145 attempts for 750 yards pretty much repeated that the next year he was having an even better year i believe injuries kind of got to him that particular season then he had that junior season where he was the guy and it was outstanding man he completely put the team on his back and if we look back on that 2011 team it was definitely some other big time talents there as well but he definitely stood out as the guy on the team opposite the defense of course and man i love watching trip richardson play Remember, this has nothing to do with NFL production. One time I did one of these, it had to do a ton with NFL production when we were talking about wide receiver university or running back university and something like that. That's just my way of doing it. But on this one, it's clearly nothing but college. And this guy was the man in college. Number seven here, Marcus Lattimore. We were robbed of something special man i thought about putting his knee injury up there but that thing is too damn gruesome and i'm extremely squeamish and i remember when it happened and that was the second one i remember this dude having multiple knee injuries and when he came back that dude was still the truth i don't understand it man i wish this guy could have stayed healthy he was so fun to watch as far as running in the zone schemes his vision uh, his feel for the offense, I felt like he was carrying South Carolina's whole program on his back. <laughs> man, I love watching that dude back then, man. I could sit down and study him for hours. I wish he had a chance to go to the NFL healthy and show what he could do, man. I think we were robbed of somebody who had potential, at the very least at the college level, man. Hall of Fame type potential. Another cat who came in like gangbusters. Nearly 1,200 yards as a freshman. And you can see in that sophomore season, he was doing even better until he ran into that knee injury and then came back from that and was still doing very good. He was a touchdown machine. You could throw him the ball out of the backfield, especially as a freshman, man. He was so damn good out of the backfield. That entire South Carolina team was definitely dope. I remember at one particular point in time, I had Stephon Gilmore, Melvin Ingram, Alshon Jeffrey, you know, he had some dudes on it, man. And uh, Marcus Lattimore, no more so than that dude, man. So salute to you, Marcus. You were definitely one of those dudes that left it all out there in the field, and you deserve a ton of credit, and I want people to remember you from here on out. All right, number six is my man number seven, Leonard Fournette. Once again, another cat who could easily be number one on the list, but this is my list, and I'm putting Leonard Fournette at six. And, man, his skill set was vast. And he had some crazy-ass highlight plays. I remember the play against Auburn where he slung the defensive back. I forget his name. He slung that man off, man. He slung that man like some coke straight up. The thing about Leonard Fournette, though, is, man, fast, physical, hands uh, out the wazoo. Everything you could think of, man. But listen, you can't tell me Leonard Fournette wasn't already 27 years old when he was in college. I need to see his birth certificate. <laughs> I need to see his birth certificate. That man is probably Cuban or something like that. I bet you if you broke it down for that man and you made him strip off that accent, he'd be like, hey, man, they need people like me, man. When Quay Lou, she love me again. <laughs> that man's, man's like Scarface or something like that, man. That man is old. Dang, tough times back then, bro. Sixth in the Heisman Trophy in 2015. Man, he had 1,900 yard season with 22 touchdowns. It's one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen, period. 
thousand yards as a freshman. Now his junior year left a lot to be desired. Maybe that's why I didn't put him a little higher. I just remember him kind of going out with a whimper, even though he still was balling his ass off. So I don't know, man. When it comes to lists like this, man, you got a nitpick or something like that, you got to be able to justify it. Because like I said before, it's 50 people you can easily put in the top 10 in a in a list with running backs in the SEC, man. Love me some Leonard Fournette. Granddaddy. <laughs> Say it with me. TG3. TG3. <laughs> that man, Todd Gurley. Jesus, I don't know what to say. Another cat who's a victim of circumstance as he was definitely injury prone in college or if he wasn't injured he was always going through something off the field not necessarily getting in trouble with the police but just due to like ncaa violations or something like that if he could have played more he could have definitely been number one on the list he's one of my favorites on the list no doubt about that i love how he played he had blinding speed and he looked like he was about 230 like 6'1", 230 or something like that. And he was outrunning people like you wouldn't believe. Very physical. Uh, man, you talk about looking at that man's quads, paws. Uh, you had to eye him up. If you had to meet him in a, in a B gap or, or straight up in an A gap or something like that with no protection, boss, you didn't want to do that, right? You was going to try to dive at his ankles or something like that. He was that nasty. Another cat versatile with hands and everything. I like the scheme that he ran in at Georgia. Uh, Todd Gurley was the truth. All right, here we go. 1,300, nearly 1,400 yards as a freshman with 17 touchdowns. Man, that was hard. Dude, I'm telling you right now. Look, he never got to 1,000 yards again, but you knew his impact was crazy and that last season man he played a handful of games yeah here we go six games right here he had nearly a thousand yards in six games he was crushing it he was on his way to a very special season when it was cut short i want to say for the ncaa thing i don't know you guys have to jog my memory on that one right there it's a jogging memory exercise and i'm struggling with some of the details there but i just remember that man was killing it and maybe it was a good thing because uh, he could have suffered another injury and we see that man had came out like game busters in the nfl and now his career looks like it's already over man crazy it's funny how football can do something to you man you got to make the most of it when you can number four we're on four right yeah number four darius guys from lsu Darius Geis of the past 15 years, man, he's probably in my top three as far as personal favorite running backs. Darius Geis, when Leonard Fournette left, Darius Geis picked right up and was just as good, if not better. Darius Geis had that crazy 4-4 speed. He had crazy agility. He was extremely physical. You know I like them cats 5'10", 215 to 225 types like that what i tell you all the time nobody wants to hit those cats in the fourth quarter they're all shoulder pads they're all knees they're all quads all that shit that people don't be wanting to hit and i feel and i know people are just going to forget about days guys because crazy ass off the field transgressions man some of that shit you don't even want to read about right hopefully none of it's true man we'll never know if it's true or not but hey i'm not here to judge the man by anything but football, I don't give a flip about no one's personal life there. I know Darius Geis was that guy. What I liked about Darius Geis was his efficiency. When he was drafted by my Washington Commanders, man, I was going hammer time. Obviously, we didn't really get a chance to see that man ever play. He got injured, and then the rest is history there. But 5'11", 218 pounds. Uh, you can see here his efficiency. Look at it. 8.5 average as a freshman, a 7.6 in a nearly 1,400 yard season. What? And in his junior year, I remember they had a rotation going up, some really good running backs, one of them being Daryl Williams. So he didn't get a chance to get 300 attempts or anything like that, but the man made the most, right? 12, another 1,200 yard season, 11 touchdowns there. Of course, you know you could throw him the ball out of the backfield. Physical as all get out. Very shifty. <laughs> he was extra fun. It was that bowl game. One of them bowl games, man. He was on one. Huh? Was it Louisville or somebody like that? They were playing. And he absolutely taxidermied a man. 
King Henry in the building at number three. Come on, man. King Henry had the greatest season ever in college football for the SEC running back. Uh, maybe for a running back, period. Heisman winner, everything you can think of there. Derrick Henry, the epitome of a zone runner. He may be the best zone runner in the past 15 years or of the past 15 years. That man, of course, you know about his physical attributes. There's not a faster player over 100 meters to me than Derrick Henry. Anyone ever seen Derrick Henry get run down? Yes, he ran a 4-5 at the combine, but that's just over 40 yards. It takes that man a while to get going, but when he does get going, he is leaving your ass behind, no doubt about that. Stiff arms galore. He finally started to run behind his pads. Now remember, I covered this, right? This is the heyday of me covering Alabama footballs when Derrick Henry was the running back. And I used to tell everybody, I was like, man, I need to see this guy run behind his pads, man. He's He's down for the get down, right? He didn't like he didn't really want any contact. He started doing that. He took his game to the next level. His last season was phenomenal. Obviously, he came when there was a deep rotation at Alabama. So his first season, he was man, he was behind quite a few players there. But by the time he was a junior, we see here in sophomore year, 990 yards. He almost got his thousand. But then he went for 2,200 yards and 28 touchdowns. What? They barely used him out of the backfield as far as catching the ball. They should have because when he gets the ball like that in the NFL, he's money. But, man, having that type of workload, 395 attempts in one season, man, that's some people's career. He had it in one season with a 5.6 average. <laughs> he could have definitely easily been number one as well. But these next two guys, I feel... I feel certain about that. I have, I got, I nailed these top two, at least by my standards. Number two, Nick Chubb. Is there a more unassuming superstar than Nick Chubb? The guy doesn't say anything. He just goes to work. You talking about a hard worker, man. 25, eight. He's one of those guys clocking overtime, a blue collar cat. You gotta love the perseverance of having a knee injury almost similar to Marcus Lattimore's and coming back stronger than ever. <laughs> I, man, I shudder to think with this dude. Man, it's not, it, it's, no reason, it's no reason to even talk about his knee injury. A lot of people still think like he never got back to his form or he's not back to his form, but he's the best in the world. If you ask me, you can make a, a, a case that he's the very best in the world to this day. And in college, he was absolutely ripping shit up. You talk about another cat with a sprinter speed, another cat with some serious physicality. He ain't tackling this cat. Right? A lot of people making business decisions, right? Not wanting to tackle this cat. And he makes you pay for every single tackle if he doesn't just try to outrun you to the corner or something like that, man. Check this out. One of the best debuts by a freshman. And that year was the year I believe Todd Gurley got hurt. And I want to say he got started a little bit late in that season, obviously because Ty Gurley was there. But man, once he got the call, he answered the bell like you wouldn't believe. 7.1 yards per attempt on a 1,500-yard season. 219 attempts. That's when that knee happened. When that knee injury happened, man, he was on his way to having an even better season than the one before. Shit, he was averaging 8.1 yards per attempt on that one. Came back. Right, he's a little rusty or whatever like that. He still was balling. Five yards per attempt. Ended with six yards per attempt. 15 touchdowns, 1,300 yards. He still had 1,100 yards the year back after the knee injury. This man nearly had 5,000 yards of college fo in college football. Nick Chubb is an anomaly. He's a rare breed. Nick Chubb, man, you got to love everything that that cat stands for right there. Salute to you, Nick Chubb. And my number one, drum roll please, Darren McFadden, my man run DMC. Not only is he my all time favorite SEC running back, I have a hard time believing there's anyone more freakier than this guy, <laughs> straight up. I was talking about Derrick Henry's 100 meter speed and prowess. He still ran that 4-5 at the combine. 
Darren McFadden at six foot one, two fifteen or two twenty or whatever he was, ran a four three three. He used to put the entire conference on his back. He was so damn fun to watch, man. He was going against some of the best defenses you could see, and nobody could stop the dude. They had no legitimate offensive talent besides him and Felix Jones. Really, if you look back on it, that's pretty much about it. It was just him and Felix Jones running them, running them hogs to the damn SEC West title going against some dope-ass teams. This man breaking off all kinds of long runs. He created a whole genre. Shout-outs to my man David Lee, uh, the innovator of the year, I believe, that year when they came with that Wildcat offense. Everybody and their grandmama had to run a damn Wildcat offense, which, of course, morphed into the zone read of, and um, a lot of people running that with the QBs now instead of putting the running back back there. So this man right here, along with Adrian Peterson, the two best running backs I've seen in the past 15, 20 years. Damn. <laughs> My memory was off on this one right here. It was even better than I, I remember. Jesus. Look at this. You don't see too many people with multiple huge seasons in college football uh, generating nearly 5,000 yards, over 4,500 yards in just three seasons. An 1,100-yard season as a freshman, that man had 1,600 yards and then finished with 1,800 yards. Come on. And it ain't like my man King Henry, who had a ton of talent on the offensive line, a ton of talent, uh, or or, uh, some really good talent out wide, of course. This man, him and Felix Jones, everyone knew Arkansas was going to run the ball, and they still couldn't stop it. They had to invent different ways to run the ball because that's really all they could do. They didn't have no passing game out there. That was really all they could do. Man, I love Darren McFadden to this day. Except when that man is getting the run. I don't want to talk about the man, but that had a man had a funny off-field issue. I came front there. If you ever seen that on TMZ, all I can say is, hey, hold on, bro. <laughs> all right. But listen, it's your boy Murph, the Underground King, a.k.a. the DMV King. Shouts to guys out there, right? Like Sony Michelle, he could have definitely even made this right here. I was this close to putting him in and then took him out. Um, and then, of course, guys like TJ Yeldon, my, that's one of my favorites right there. Uh, Eddie Lacy, Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram could have been in the top five here. I made a last minute decision to not include him, but let's just say he's uh, 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 11, 11 A or something like that. Mark Ingram was the absolute truth as well. Um, man, and beyond that, man, there's a lot of good backs out there. I could just sit here and just name them off. So what I want you guys to do is go ahead and give me your top 10 if you're watching this far in the video. I thought this was going to be a short video. It ends up being super long. I, I just cannot do something short, I guess. It's just, I don't know. It's just not in my DNA. I'll try to get better at it and do some short content so I can get some short candy content out. But let me know which position group you'd like to see next. And also give me your top 10 and maybe I can do a commenter version or a fan version of the top 10 running backs of the past 15 years in the SEC. All right. Salute to those of you who watch Real Man Watch to the end and then comment. Shout out to all my soldiers out there, man. Shout out to my boy BT Dub. Shout outs to my guy Ryan Revis, Carter Metcalf, Harrison Freiberg, William Brown, Brian Perry, DJ Lane, Eric Trench, and Antoinette King. All my real football heads out there sending in that quality support, supporting your boy out there, man. Much love to you guys. And if you haven't already, make sure you send in that quality support and make sure you hit that thanks button so you can tip your waiter because I'm always giving that hibachi. Salute. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.